have come with our wives, with our elders, heads of our tribes. We've all gathered here today that the Lord may establish us. That the Lord will make a covenant with us. Glory to God. That we'll be a people to his name. I am honored tonight, my brothers, my sisters, each and every one of you, that in our midst we have a man of God that has labored for over 40 years in the ministry, building, establishing, working with lives, transforming. And we are privileged here tonight that he did not come alone but he came with his wife. Hallelujah. He came with his wife, his partner, his comrade, and his pastor. So I got to hear. And so brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, all friends, all you little ones that are here, can we just be on our feet to receive a great man of God, our apostle, our bishop, our pastor, our friend, hallelujah, Apostle A. A. Rutivi. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, grateful to God for having granted us journey grace for us to be here. We are truly grateful and thankful. We feel honored that God enabled us to make this meeting. As you have heard, I have not come here by myself. I came here with my friend, my dear wife, my sister Mary. And so she uh, keeps me aligned. And uh, I think she's the only woman on the face of the earth that dares rebuke me. And she says one word, or she just looks at me, I get the communication. And so, I would like to appreciate uh, Bishop Madziwa and my Madziwa, and the entire leadership of uh, Gos Gospel of Peace Assembly here in Harare, and all the uh, assemblies and constituencies that are within uh, the uh, country, this great country, Zimbabwe. We love you, we honor you, and appreciate, and appreciate your hospitality that you have extended to us. World-class hospitality that you have shown unto us. And not just us, from Kenya, but even those that have come out of the city of Harare. We want to say thank you on their behalf and on my own behalf. We came, um, 14 of us from Kenya. Uh, sorry, I take that back. 15 of us from Kenya. And uh, we are happy to be here. My fellow ministers and bishops, um, I'm very honored to stand before you. I'm not in any way or in any form or shape better than any of you uh, to be standing here today, but I acknowledge and recognize the gift that is upon your lives and in your own right you are laboring to fulfill God's call upon your lives. And we are thankful 
to the wonderful saints of God that make up this fellowship. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. Across the borders, uh, we just want you to know that we love you. Amen. Amen. So I want us to uh, begin our reading uh, from the book of John, the 11th chapter. We're going to read two verses. So we start from verse number 39. It says, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Say I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Father, we are so grateful and thankful that you have gathered here your people for a time such as this, for a bigger purpose than we can imagine. And I pray that God, you graciously open the heavens and pour a blessing upon this congregation. I pray that your spirit will intermingle with our spirits that we may receive revelation knowledge. I pray that God, you will touch every hearing ear and every seeing eye, that we may behold your glory and your goodness. And I pray that God, you touch my lips of clay, that I'll be able to articulate clearly the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and that I will communicate divine revelation without hindrance or interference. Let your spirit take over this territory, this place, the tent of the meeting. And let your spirit, O oh God, take over the entire spiritual, atmospheric territory of this entire city and nation. We dedicate this time to you. All these things we pray and we ask in and through the name of Jesus Christ, God's strong son. And everybody give God a resounding amen and hallelujahs. Please take your seats now in the presence of the Lord. This phrase, build again, that you see here on my left, is about the work of restoration. God's work. And even our lives as saints of God undergo a makeover process from time to time. A lot of reversals. And setbacks occur on this pilgrim's journey from earth to glory. We are left hopeless, desperate, and dejected. Thus, a starting over becomes necessary. This is why we are here to face the aftermath of our experiences. Does God have a word for us? Or more personally... For you in your current occasion or season. Here's what I hear him say through the book of John. We're going back again to our text that we read. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. I feel like someone is under a very big stone. Martha, scripture says, says unto the Lord... Lord, by this time he stinketh. By this time your condition stinketh. It's irretrievably dead. Nothing can be done about this situation. It stinks now. By this time he stinketh. He's been dead four days now and buried 
six feet under. But the word of the Lord Jesus said unto her, Did I not tell you? Did I not say unto you, If thou wouldest believe, you will see the glory of the Lord. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Come on, say it like you mean it. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Yes, it's stinking, but if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Yes, it's dead, buried, and gone, and forgotten, but if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Somebody is going to leave this convention having seen the glory of God in the impossible situations and in the impossible conditions of their lives. They are going to witness God's glory. And I hear Moses speaking in the book of Exodus chapter 33. And he says to God, show me your glory. Hallelujah. I want you to carry this phrase as a prayer under your breath throughout this convention. Show me your glory. Praise the name of the Lord. God's glory supersedes any human glory, any human power. God's glory shines above anything that is human. And so I stand here tonight and I imploringly cry out to God and say, show me your glory. Praise God. Because as I see the glory of God, hallelujah, my dead brother Lazarus will come back to life. Hallelujah. That which is stinking will mortar force into something that will be uh, alive and well again. Praise the name of the Lord. Come and shout in the house of the Lord. If you believe what I'm saying here tonight, you will not go back home in the same manner and in the same way that you came. You may came, have come here dead. You may, came, come, you may have come here stinking. You may have come here hopeless. You may have come here uh, desperate. You may have come here hopeless. You may have come here dejected. You may have come here rejected. But you won't go back home in the same way that you came here. And that I guarantee. And that I promise. Because you are standing under the canopy of God's glory. Lift your voice and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Is your situation similar or worse than that of Martha? Dead and sticking, irredeemable, irrecoverable. It's completely lifeless, dead and gone. As Martha's disheartening words needed a rejoinder, so do I issue a rejoinder to your situation and to the words and the thoughts of your meditation. I stand here to say, God has a final say. Touch your neighbor and say, God has a final say. Hallelujah. Jesus would not let Martha's doubting words carry the day. Jesus would not allow the thoughts of Martha to be the prevailing thoughts for that day. He had to come with an authoritative word, with a powerful word, with a final word. And that word was God's opinion on this matter of Lazarus' death. And he says, if you believe, should you not see the glory of God? Praise God. And so when we say build again, we are saying there is hope. Did you hear what I just said? There is hope for the nation of the Sadiq. There is hope for this country of Zimbabwe. There is hope for your marriage. There is hope for your relationships. There is hope for your church. 
There is hope for our fellowship. There is hope for our fathers and our mothers. There is hope for the young men and the young ladies. Somebody shout and say, there is hope. There is hope. Hallelujah. So beyond your story, I don't know what your story is all about. How you tell it and how others tell it. How your detractors tell it. How your enemies tell your story. But behind that story, I came to tell you that there is glory. Did you hear what I just said? I said behind that story, there is glory. So if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Shout an amen to God. The principal thing here is believing, which is faith. We are not talking about blind faith. But I'm talking tonight about realistic faith. Uh, let me give you a scripture here. Uh, this scripture in the book of Acts chapter 15. Uh, we will start our reading from the 14th verse. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. What was the reason for the visitation? It was a purposeful visitation. And Simeon hath declared how God at the very first did visit the uh, Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. The visitation was a targeted visitation. It was not just for the general public in Zimbabwe. No, it was a, a targeted visitation. Hallelujah. Amen. It was a, an intentional visitation. It was a purposeful visitation. A visitation with an agenda. And the agenda was to take a, a selection from the selection. It was to take a people for God's name. People that will be called by the name of God. They would bear the name of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And you so grateful that God favored you and honored you to call you by his name. And to bear his name. Therefore I say. Do not desecrate. Or dishonor. The name of the Lord. That you are called by. Or you are named by. Carry that name. With pride and honor. Carry that name. With dignity. Did you hear what I said? Don't dishonor. The name of God. Because the scripture says. He that uh, dishonors me, he shall be lightly esteemed in the book of uh, 1 Samuel. It says, wherefore, the Lord God of Israel saith, I say it indeed that thy house and the house of thy father uh, should walk before me forever. Uh, that was a covenant that the uh, entire household uh, of uh, of uh, this uh, man was going to serve God and walk before God forever. It was to be an everlasting covenant or arrangement. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me, for them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm saying this to you. Listen to me. Listen to me clearly. God has given you his name. You are called by his name. You walk under the power of his name. You bear that name. But please do not carry that name in shame. Do not dishonor the name of the Lord. Because God says, if you will not honor him and despise him, the Bible says you shall be lightly esteemed. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, so, let's go back to Acts chapter 15. And to these agree the words of the prophets. As it is written, verse number 15, 16 now. After this, I will return. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, I'm coming back to the same, same people that I had called out. They came out from among many. They came out from Babylon. They came out from idol worship. They came out from false religions. I called them. But when I called them, I put them aside, separated them. But to these agree the words of the prophets. That I am coming back for the same, same people. And when I come back to them, hallelujah, I will build again the tabernacle of David. Praise God. I will build again the fallen tabernacle of David. The throne of David. I will rebuild it again. Praise God. Hallelujah. Time and conditions had left the tabernacle of David in ruins. Praise God. The tabernacle of David gave way to the temple of Solomon. But there was destruction all over. Now, it's no longer there. Even the temple of Solomon, it's no longer there. But I'm here to tell you that the ministry of the minor prophets was main task was to encourage those that were engaged in the work of restoration. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Men like Ezra, oh, yeah. men like Nehemiah, oh, yeah. they needed the voices of prophets yeah. as they were rebuilding uh, the temple of God and the wall of Jerusalem as, as far as uh, uh, Nehemiah was concerned. His task was to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And I'm going to talk more about that, the Lord allowing, on Sunday. But I want you to know that we are busy uh, looking into a way, a life, a work of restoration. Amen. And that is why I said in my introduction that when we talk about building again, we are in a way, talking about restoration. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so he raised the prophets like Joel. Joel began to speak and say, God is going to restore uh, the years which were lost. The way years that were eaten by the canker worm, by the palmer worm, by the locusts. He says, all those years that were eaten, all that time that was lost, he said, we are going to see a building again. Praise God. Everything that is in desolation, everything that is in devastation, God says, there is going to be a rebuilding again. Praise God. He says, uh, after this I will return. It says uh, the prophets, they seem to speak in unison. Joel spoke about it. Hallelujah. Haggai spoke about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Zechariah spoke about it. Now whom he spoke about it. It says to this, when it comes to restoration, when it comes to the rebuilding again, prophet after prophet and after another prophet, they seem to say the same thing without contradiction. And what are they saying? What is the message of the prophet, of the prophets? They are saying he is coming back. And when he's coming back, this man that is coming back, this great one that is coming up back. Hallelujah. The writer of the book of Hebrews chapter 1, he said, God who before time spake unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken by this unto us by his own son. Glory be to God. 
what the prophets were saying was now uh, 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 summarized. Everything that they were speaking was now summarized or found fulfillment in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Sundry times he spoke by the prophets. But in this last days, there is one voice. And that one voice is the voice of the Son of God. Hallelujah. And he's coming back. He's coming back. Just like he said he will. Whether you like it or not, he's coming back. Whether your government is ready or not ready for it, he's coming back. Hallelujah. Whether the White House is ready or not, he's coming back. Whether our presidents of our nations here in Africa or the world over are ready or not, he's coming back. Whether they know it or they do not know it, but Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, he's coming back. He's coming back. And when he comes back, he has a work, and the work is to rebuild again. Glory be to God. What you destroyed, what the Kankawam destroyed, what the locusts destroyed, what uh, COVID-19 destroyed, he's coming back to rebuild again the fallen tabernacle of David. Glory be to God. Praise God. Come on, lift your voices at the back there and give God a mighty shout in the house of the Lord. Right now, it's fallen. Right now, the Davidic kingdom is not there. Right now, the Davidic throne is empty, but which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, the vision that I have is that in the ashes of yesterday, in the ashes, listen to this very attentively, in the ashes of your past, in the ashes of your business, in the ashes, the debris, hallelujah. I see seeds. I see seeds. I see seeds. In the ashes, in the middle of the ashes, I see seeds. And you know there is life in every single seed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see seeds in the ruins behind your life, the ruins of your past. It's not all gone. It's not all over. It's not all wastage. There is a seed somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the rain come down. Let the oxygen go under there. There is going to be a germination. There is going to be a germination. I speak as a prophet of God and say, in your past, there's a seed somewhere there. Hallelujah. So there is hope as long as there is a seed. There is hope. Something is going to shoot. Something is going to germinate. Something is going to grow with life and life everlasting. Hallelujah. Life of a seed is indestructible. Life of a seed is not a dying life. Life of a seed is an endless life. So when I turn and go back to the debris, hallelujah, and go back to the ruins and the rubbles of my past, and I sift through, I scratch through, I see some seeds there. I see some seeds there. I see some seeds there. And as long as there's some seeds, I know it's not over until God says it's over. And as long as there is a seed, there is something that is going to come out. There is life that is going to germinate. There is something that is going to shoot. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. 
Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I left some seeds behind. I left some seeds behind. It might be a nasty past. It might be a shameful past. It might be a hopeless past. It might be a desperate past. But there are some seeds there. And all men shall see the blood. All men shall see the tree and the fruit in the, in the right time, in the due season. Lift your voices and give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 He says, and then I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. God says, I am going to set that business up. God says, I am going to set that marriage up. Yes. Yes. It seems some of you had mastered the quarreling in your homes. But God says, I am going to set it up. Set it up. Amen. Listen to me. If you came here before it was dark or night fell on us, you might have seen out there some columns that are standing there. Some of you call them pillars, but those are columns. You see them standing there. Huh? I don't know what went in your thoughts, but I am speaking this message to the local church here. That what you see out there, and you think, where is it going to go? What's going to come out of it? And you think like it's gone. It's stinking. It's buried. It's been dead for years. Ah, Lazarus was dead for more than four days. But he was buried four days, I guess. He was rotten, stinking, martyr. Conjectured and said, Master, by this time, by this time, he's not only dead, but he stinketh. That's how, listen to the conversations that you speak to yourself. When you woke up this morning, what conversation were you speaking to yourselves? What do you speak to yourselves? Listen, my mind is yielded to God. And I'm not going to rent space in my mind for my enemies. Just to fool around there. No, don't rent space in your mind. If they cannot speak good things about you. Engage yourself in this conversation about yourself and tell yourself they are saying I will not make it. But I am saying I will make it. They are saying that I am nothing. But I am saying I am whom God says I am. Hallelujah. They are saying that I will never be married. But the way I see things, I will be married and I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Come on, lift your hand and give God a shout of praise. Learn, learn to speak to yourself. Learn to have conversations with yourself. Hallelujah. And let what you say about yourself supersede what every detractor is saying about you. 
the best thing that you can do if you do not know how to shut down the mouths of the gainsayers who are again speaking against you, it is just to ignore them and then carry on with your agenda and carry on with the purpose of God for your life and ignore what they are thinking about you and what they are saying about you. Do you know what is the word of God? The word of God is God's say on a matter. Amen. Not what your enemy is saying. Not what your mother is saying. Not what your father is saying. God's word is God's say. God's opinion on a matter. So that's what I live by. Come on, somebody lift up your hand and give God some praise. So say this to yourself, he's coming back to rebuild. He's coming back to set it up. He's coming back to reestablish it. He's coming back to restore. He's coming back to reinstate. Come on, clap hands for yourselves. Remember I said, we are here to face the aftermath of our experiences. Whatever that experience might be. But we are here to face it. And there's no better position, no vantage posture than to stand in the presence of God. And take a real good look at all those things that came as a result of your experience. Amen. No matter how nasty the experience was. But you can say, I know today there's a restoration. Today there's some seeds. Today there's some rebuilding again. Glory be to God. So my brothers and sisters, we're not talking here about blind faith. Because that's what it takes for us to see the manifestation of the rebuilding. It takes faith. If you look at things through the eyes of doubt and disbelief, you will not experience or witness joyfully this wonderful process of rebuilding again. So it takes one ingredient could be more, but we will concentrate on one ingredient. And this ingredient is what we call faith or believing. It's a principal thing, believing forward slash faith. We are not talking about blind faith, but realistic faith. Some have charged believers for blind faith, saying you cannot see the problems. You cannot understand the issues. And hence, you just believe without evidence. That, that's how we are challenged by people. Look at you. Just having blind faith. You ignore evidence. Your so-called faith is therefore an excuse for thinking. In other words, you're saying, I believe, I believe. To some people that cannot experience or who have not experienced what we have experienced, they are saying your so-called faith is therefore an excuse for not thinking. You just don't want to rationalize. However, that is not biblical faith. Real faith is realistic. It fully sees the problems, but refuses to allow difficulties to overcome your confidence that God can do anything. Did you hear what I just said? It's realistic in the sense that it refuses to allow difficulties, circumstances, problems to overcome and overpower your confidence that God can indeed do anything. 
the doctor has said this, yet my faith remains realistic. And this faith is bigger than the statement of the doctor. And it is predicated on my confidence that God can do anything. And that he will always keep his promises. In other words, my confidence in this God, that this God will keep his promises, is very realistic. So I don't see your argument that I have blind faith. Abraham, for example, if we would look at him, was not blind to his aging body. Sarah, his wife too, she was not blind to the fact and the reality that she had passed childbearing age. She even say that. You are saying, she laughed actually, when she was told that this is what he's going to say. Why did you wait? Until I had my man on pose, menopause. Why did you wait? Why are you coming when my man on pulse? My womb is dead. Looked over at Mr. Abraham. Abraham had long ceased to be hubby. Abraham was now brother Abraham. So Abraham was not blind to his aging body or to Sarah's inability to conceive. Neither was he imagining the impossible as fantasy. But everything changed. Everything changed when he heard God's specific promise. Everything. The deadness of his wife's womb changed when he heard of the promise of God. Everything shifted. Hallelujah. The impossibilities, they turned into possibilities when he heard God's specific promise. And the promise combined with what he knew to be God's character. My Lord. When you take the promise of God and then mix it with the character of God. What else can you do but just believe? Today I was in this same car. With two brothers, one from a different country and another one from here. And I remember so vividly, just like yesterday, the tent was not facing this way. The tent was facing that way. And I called for people that were believing God for the fruit of the womb. And I remembered these two brothers, one was driving and the other one was seated over there. And I remembered that day very vividly. And God has blessed them, one with two children and the other one with three children. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I, and, I, and I can tell you, he's standing right here. The evidence is right there. I don't know whether you'd forgotten about it. But the evidence is right here. I don't know where the other one is seated, but it's somewhere in the congregation. But we give God the glory. We give God the praise, don't we? Hallelujah. So when you take the promise of God, combine it. With the character of God. You can't help but believe it. So it's not blind faith. 
My faith is predicated on the word of God, the promise of God. God's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he spoken and shall he not do it? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God's not a man, not a man. that he should lie. He should. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. And so add to that the character of God, the veracity of God, the consistency of God, Amen. the track record of God. Add that to his promise. Abraham was now convinced and convicted. And his faith was not blind faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That was sufficient to strengthen his faith and to give him a powerful resolve in his posture and disposition. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So his confidence was absolute confidence that God would do it. And so God credited Abraham as being righteous as a gracious gift. So in John chapter 20, and I'm going to end right here, verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. And he said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Hallelujah. Maranatha. Jesus is coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on somebody give God some praise here. So if you believe. You will receive. And you will receive. Your restoration. You will receive. You're building up again. Amen. If you believe. Oh, yes. Are you hearing? Help me somebody here. Oh, yes. If you believe, yes. you will see the goodness of God Amen. in the land of the living. Amen. If you believe, yes. you are going to see the glory of God Amen. manifested Amen. in this convention. Oh, yes. We say where we come from, East Africa. And I know, you know, that wise men come from the east. And let me say this to you. Manifestation. Manifestation. Before it comes. Hallelujah. Manifestation requires expectation. Expectation is the mother of manifestation. If you don't believe, there can never be a manifestation. If you do not expect it, it's not going to happen to you. The miracles I know of, they don't happen on that wavelength. The miracles I know, they happen when and after somebody has believed. And they believe before they see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll keep believing it. I'll keep believing it until I see it. I don't subscribe to the notion that seeing is believing. For me, I see it. I see it after I believed. Hallelujah. So I believe first and I see it. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, somebody in front of you, behind you, sideways, and say, you are going to see the glory of God. You are going to see the goodness of God. You are going to see the mercy of God. You are going to experience the power of God. You are going to experience the glory of God. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. The glory of God is coming down in the tent of the meeting. The glory of God is coming down 
Come on, somebody begin to worship him. Somebody begin to praise him. Somebody begin to lift up his name right now, wherever you are, under the covering of this tent. The glory of God is coming down. The glory of the living God is coming down. Shout, I want to see your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody, somebody lift up your hands here and begin to pray and begin to ask God. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. I'm sick and tired of the flesh. I'm sick and tired of men's reports. I'm sick and tired of these many reports. But Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Come on, begin to worship him. Hallelujah. Begin to glorify the Lord here. Begin to praise him now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Build again, build again your people, build again. Build again your people out of the ashes of yesterday. Build your people. Build your church. Build your people. Build your church. Build your temple. Establish your people. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Come on, lift your voices and praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Mothers, praise the Lord. Fathers, praise the Lord. Young men, young ladies, praise the Lord. The Spirit of God. It's coming down. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The fathers, the old men, and the old women shall see visions. Yeketemayasa, rotenebebe keto premisa. Yo tamanda basa prepe. Itro so pe mando sebe. Yekelemo yeperra manda baya. Under this atmosphere, I rebuke cancer. Under this atmosphere, I rebuke cancer. Under this atmosphere, I rebuke barrenness. Under this atmosphere, I rebuke lupus. Under this atmosphere, I rebuke high blood pressure. Under this atmosphere, I arrest every form of darkness. Loose. Come on, mothers, weep for your children. Come on, mothers, 
cry for your children. I heard a voice in Rama, Raquel, weeping for her children, for her children were not. I speak under the power and the action of the Holy Ghost that you speak. Mention the name of your sons. Mention the names of your daughters under this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is about to do a great work of deliverance. Oh, oh, oh. 